Hi folks, Andy Allen here for Applied Show Again. Today I have something special to share with you. It's some test footage from a recent showdown grading. My student's name is Steven. He had been training for a little over 20 years prior to coming to see me at my dojo. He was already brown belt in a different Shotokan organization and had done some Wichiru as a youngster as well. So he tra had trained with me for about two and a half years before testing. Uh, he worked his way through uh, demonstrating competency through the different Q levels of the curriculum. And uh, so this is kind of the final result. The test is four hours in length and I'm gonna condense that to just 15 or 20 minutes or so. So as you'll see from this footage, we cover a lot of bases. There's a lot going on in this curriculum and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So stay tuned and sit back, relax. The first part of the test was Kata. Steven started off with doing Hian Godan. That was my choice of one of the Hian Katas. Hey! Following that was my choice of a Teki Kata and for that I chose Teki Nidan. Then Steven had to do one of other Basadai, Empi, Jian, or Konkadai, and for that he chose Basadai. Hey! The next part of the test was Kian. I have some views on Kion, what it should be, what it shouldn't be. I, I think Kion should be a tool for developing practical skills, not uh, to, in some way to conform to arbitrary aesthetic standards. So as you'll see, the Kion that I do is more free-flowing, where we're looking at developing natural, functional movements, not conforming to some arbitrary aesthetic standards. Next part of our test is progressive impact or pad work. If you look closely, a lot of these drills come right from the Kion sets. So for each combination, Steven did it uh, six times, six reps, slowly, and then another, another six times with speed. So this is quite a physically demanding part of the test. So our first combination, we have a switch kick, step back, hook punch, Yakuzuki Mawashigiri. Uh, next one after that is a, um, uh, a punching combination followed by a clench, elbows into knees, and a double leg takedown. That's one of the most nine throws. After that, we have a punch and elbow combination. And then we get off line, throw a couple punches close the distance. This one I really like, it's from Ian Abernethy. It's a My Gary Step Back Yakuzuki, stronger than you might think it is, hook punch and uppercut. Uh, this one's cool, uh, basic punch combination followed by a flip of Gary. And here we have a little slip with uh, one, two to finish. And here, this, this one is a, it's a basic combination, but at some point I'm going to start swinging the pads at Steven's head. He has to crash in to close the distance, distance uh, clinch up, throw some elbows and some knees. Following the pad work, we have kumite and tagumi drills. These are set drills done with a certain degree of compliance. Uh, the first one starts with what I just very unimaginatively call clinch flow drill number one. Uh, this is a drill that Ian has, Ian Abernethy has taught in a number of seminars I've attended. And what I've done is I've added an arm drag. So at some point when I'm trying to clear Steven's overhook, he's going to time it so he can get, get an arm drag, uh, take control of the back, get a grip, kick my knees out, and strike them on the back. Uh, next drill is, is the same thing to start. It starts with clinch flow drill number one again. But this time, after the arm drag, he's going to execute a tiny Atoshi throw. The next drill is a little choking flow drill. This is something I picked up at a KU seminar a little while ago. And so this is all done from a standing position. The, the partner is completely compliant. Uh, but this, a lot of these chokes can be done from mount as well. So they're applicable both standing and on the ground. So next drill deals with a habitual act of physical violence, the rear naked choke. And this one comes right from the Gracie curriculum. So someone's choking from behind and you're going to do what well, looks kind of like a hip throw and then strike once you're on the ground. Next drill deals with the guillotine choke, another HAPV or habitual act of physical violence. Uh, in this one, you drape your arm over the shoulder, you take the person to the ground and from there, uh, if they still have a hold of your neck, you circle around, you do um, a head and arm choke and you can step over and lock, get the hook in with the ankle there. That one you can see in BJJ, I've also done similar drills in, in KU seminars as well. Next one deals with the, the, the schoolyard uh, headlock, and this one is right from the Gracie curriculum. Next we have Bunkai. So since Steven was doing Basadai, he did a couple of different drills from that kata. First one deals with a single leg takedown or attempt to do so, and so I have a hole of his leg and Steven's using part of the kata to uh, escape my grip and get one of his own. And this comes from Ian Abernethy, it's the end sequence of Basadai, and if the throw fails, 
right there. Then use the, the last four shootos to uh, clear a limb and get a roll of the head and do a takedown. This is another techie knee down drill. This one is really, really nasty. It's dirty and brutal, which is why I love it. Uh, it comes from Ian Abernathy. I'll put the link there at the, in the video description down below for you. All right, next drill is a holistic pad drill that I put together a couple years ago. Uh, so we, we start off with some strikes, followed by a double leg takedown. Again, that's one of the closest throws. From there, we do the little ground and pound, get the mount. Uh, some more strikes. Uh, this comes from MP, the hammer fist strikes, and the arm bar attempt that failed. Uh, from uh, his guard, I throw some strikes. He grabs the head and throws some elbows. Earlier in the test, Steven did Teki Niden. So this, this uh, particular drill comes right from that kata, the, the early movement. So I do a, a rear bear hug over the arms and he's using the open movements of Teki Niden. All right, next we have some Nagiwaza or some throwing. So these are done with compliant partners and not all the throws are shown in this footage here, but we have uh, an Asota Gary and a Doshi is what Steven's doing in this footage here. Yeah. All right, now we have some Nagiwaza. These are, again, set drills with the compliant partner. First one, we have a uh, position from side control, transitioning into keskitami or side pin, and that's followed by a head and arm choke and then a gift wrap choke. Nuwaza drill number two involves some position transitions with some submissions in between. So we start from side control and from there we do a shoulder lock and transition into a kimura, another shoulder lock. Move through north-south, gather the arm up, and do a head and arm choke. That's followed by two more shoulder locks. We transition to full mount. And from there, we do a, a choke using kind of an agyuke type of position. And another drill where we start off with an escape from side control. We transition into guard. From there, we pull our opponent down and finish up with the Kimura, get the shoulder lock, sitter sweep, and from there we go through another shoulder lock or Americana. We also have some basic isolated ground applications. We have a arm bar from guard, as well as a triangle choke. Live training or pressure testing should be a part of every curriculum. Uh, I personally start that right from white belt. So we start this off with Steven trying to defend against random grabs. So even though we have a number of people grabbing, this is not meant to be a multiple opponent drill. So uh, different things we use throughout the test. We have um, him defending against a, a, a rear naked choke, a typical headlock. So he doesn't know who's going to attack and what attack they're going to use, but he is expected to react quickly and use the proper technique. Next we have some Jui Kumite. So this is not the type of tournament style sparring that, I, that I'm used to from years ago. Uh, we are wearing some protective gear. We have 14 or 16 ounce gloves which allows us to make some contact. And we're also wearing shin gear. So the only real rule set is that there's no stoppage. The rounds are two minutes each. And we can make some contact with the head and the body. Um, typically we're not going to clinch up. We're not going to throw. It's just striking only. So we did three two minute rounds in total. Uh, I had Steven for the first round, after which he had uh, another partner for another two minutes, and then I came back fresh for the third round. So at this point in the test, he's getting pretty gassed for about two and a half hours in already. He'd already done his, his pad work, his, his kata, kian, bunkai, so, and we're not even close to being finished this one. <laughs> Next part of the test is Nagiwaza or some randori. So uh, I was Steven's partner for most of the time here and I offered some resistance, made a few throw attempts of my own and Steven was allowed to use any of the throws that he had learned. Uh, we did both gi and no gi. And in this particular format, there's no striking or dirt allowed. And once one partner hit the floor, it is time to stand up and reset. All 
All right, next we have Niwaza, or ground fighting. So the, the first round of three rounds, we started with uh, a hip throw. So Steven was compliant for a throw. Once he hit the mat, then it was time to fight. So the, the rules here, um, sometimes we allow a bit of light striking, we didn't this particular test, uh, but once there was a submission it was reset and start all over again. All in Kumite is next. So here uh, we're, we're wearing much smaller gloves, Steven has some some Kumite gloves on. I'm wearing some MMA gloves. It allows us to, to grapple. And if you want to strike from a distance, you can do so. If you want to, to crash in and clinch, you can fight from a clinch. Um, you can allow some light strikes to the body with the knees. Um, a little more careful with the head contact with those small gloves on. If you want to take down, you can. Uh, you're allowed submissions from standing. You're allowed submissions on the ground. And if there is a submission, we just stand up and start all over again. There were three rounds total of, once again, two minutes for each round. <laughs> oh, good one. And we finished the physical portion of the training with a drill called Bull in the Ring from Rory Miller. And the idea here is to stay within the circle and keep pounding away at the pads and kind of deal with the, the pushes and shoves and shots that the pad holders give you. The first scenario drill that we did was the preemptive strike and so Steven had to engage in some dialogue with, with Jake here and at some point when he determines that he can't talk his way out of things or escape, he does a preemptive strike and then escapes. Not a whole lot of room in the karate cabin to run away there. Then. The second scenario we drilled was one of protecting another person. So the goal here was to for Steven to get his uh, his friend away from danger as quickly as possible without any help. So the test is not limited to a demonstration of physical skills. One of the area is assessments of understanding. And this included a couple of different papers Steven had to write. So the first one was, what does a black belt mean to you? That's kind of pretty wide open. And the second one was a quote from Gichin Funakoshi that he had to explain. Times change, the world changes, and obviously so too much the martial arts change. Uh, if you want to hear my thoughts on that, I'll link a video up in the corner. We'll have a look at that one later. And finally, he had to write a paper on legal issues. Uh, looking at the Canadian Criminal Code, he had to explain how it pertains to protecting self, protecting others, and protecting property. Well, that's almost the entirety of the of the test. Uh, with a four-hour session, there's bound to be some bloopers, so I'm going to leave you with some outtakes. I love your comments below. Until then, I'm Andy Allen for Price Short Again. <laughs> I'm sorry, my fault. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I keep destroying myself. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Right. Whoa. Right. Are you sure? <laughs> Thank you.
Library. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> library of salt. <laughs> <laughs>